Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. As I'm sure all of you are aware, with every single XRP transaction, there's a tiny little shred of XRP that is burnt forever. It's, it's, the, uh, it's the fee for transacting on the XRP ledger. And the reason that this exists is as a preventive measure, uh, so you can't have the type of denial of service attack, you know, the DDoS attacks uh, that would otherwise undoubtedly plague the system because it gets very expensive if you want to bog down the XRP ledger and you can only do it for a very short period of time. And then what have you really achieved even if so? But but you really wouldn't because the, the price to, can transact, it, it would escalate so quickly that it, it's ordered in any sort of measurable, meaningful way, uh, you know, slow down, I mean, that kind of thing. It would just be an ungodly amount of money. And then again, you haven't actually achieved anything. Uh, but so anyway, that's why it's built in. But have you ever wondered, given that XRP is deflationary, uh, have you ever wondered, uh, since with every single transaction, uh, XRP is being burnt, how long it would take before there is no more XRP until it's it's all gone due to being burnt? Well, I mean, I'm not going to make you wait until later in the video. I'm not going to tease you. I'll tell you this, but I do have more to say about the topic. But as it turns out, it would take, at current levels, over 245,000 years to burn all of the XRP in existence uh, in transaction fees. Um, and what got me thinking about this is some data that was shared by Ripple in their Q4 2022 XRP market report. So I'll share some of that as well. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And so here's some data shared by Ripple in this XRP Q4 2022 markets report. And they highlighted something that, I mean, maybe I'm just not recalling this, but I don't remember them normally sharing uh, this particular on-chain metric in previous XRP market reports. Again, maybe I'm just not recalling it for some reason, but uh, XRP burned for transaction fees is listed right here. And so they've got the data for Q4 of 2021, just so you can compare year over year. And then you also, in case you want to compare month over month, they've got Q3 of 2022 and Q4 of 2022. So you can see that when the market was hot in 2021 in Q4, uh, I'll just use a round number here, 365,000 uh, XRP burned in that quarter, Q4 of 2021. So if you fast forward a year, actually a lot less was burned, but there's less action in crypto just in a general sense in terms of transaction and speculation. So I don't think it's going to surprise anybody, but it's closer to 101,000 uh, XRP that was burned. So less than a third compared to just the, for the same quarter, just one year prior. So, and, I, and look, I understand that this is a moving target. <laughs> you know, the the amount of XRP burned over a particular quarter, uh, it's, it's going to vary wildly. But still, this will get you a good idea of why we don't have to worry about running out of XRP. It's, it's just, it's not going to happen. And, you know, I, I had heard, you know, years ago, people doing their own calculations, talking about how, you know, if XRP were actually all burnt, then it would take thousands of years. And um, I honestly, having been an XRP holder now for over half a decade, until today, I've actually never run my own calculations. I was, I mean, I was always kind of curious, but, it, and part of the reason not is because I could already tell the numbers are so big that whatever my numbers would ultimately be, should I run such a calculation, it's still, a, it's obviously a non-issue, but I thought, you know what, what the, what the hell, let's just let's crunch some simple numbers here. So let's just assume for the sake of things that the amount of XRP burnt in Q4 of last year, uh, let's just assume that that were always the rate. Now, obviously, obviously it's not going to be, but it varies so wildly, you know, you got to work with some number, right? So let's just say that it was what's listed here, 101,968 XRP burnt, gone forever. Um, you know, so that, so, you know, if that were the case, then it's, uh, what, 407,000 or so XRP at that rate per year that's burned. And so if you just run some simple math, what you find is that in order for all XRP to be burnt, it would take 245,174 years. <laughs> Methinks it's not a problem, folks. Methinks it's not going to be a problem. Now, of course, you might be thinking... But you know, XRP in the crypto asset class, it's in its nascency now. Now, surely, surely there's, there's going to be way more traffic on the XRP ledger utilizing XRP. So way more XRP is going to be regularly burnt than what we're seeing here. And if you say that, I say, kudos, I agree. <laughs> I do agree. But let's, let's just use a big number. Let's just say 
that 100 times as much XRP was being burnt, 100 times as much as what we're seeing today, then it would still take, even with a hundred fold increase, it would still take 2,451 years for all XRP to be burnt. 2,451 years, if 100 times as much as XRP was being burnt than is actually being burnt at current levels. So that leaves a lot of room for adoption and it still takes thousands of years. Now let's get more crazy though. And I don't know if we're ever gonna literally see this, but even if we do, ain't gonna be a problem in our lifetimes. Um, but even if, let's say there were a thousand fold increase in the amount of XRP being burnt, meaning there's obviously XRP is wildly adopted as this is happening. And it's, I'm sure I could only imagine what it would be worth. Would it be hundreds of dollars or more than a thousand? I mean, I don't pretend to know what the answer would be, but if you're talking about a thousand times as much XRP being burnt as what we're actually seeing in Q4, we actually saw in Q4 of 2022, it would still take 245 years. 245 years for all XRP to be burnt. So I'm not, I don't know if we're ever going to see even, you know, past, you know, if you, you know, 100 years from now, I don't know if you're going to see that type of increase. But, I, you know, I, I share that information just acknowledging that, yes, there's, broad volatility when it comes to XRP and really crypto in general. And so it's all over the place. But that's why I'm saying like, even if it were way more adopted, it's still very clearly a non-issue. And since I'd never crunched the numbers before and Ripple put the data right there in front of me, I was like, huh, I happen to have a calculator. It's in my pocket. Um, and then they did share, share some additional information. Um, it's all positive stuff. In terms of adoption of on-demand liquidity, nothing but positive, good, awesome sauce stuff here. And so they, uh, they wrote the following, starting right here. Uh, despite a broader market slowdown, on-chain activity on the XRP ledger stayed relatively buoyant. As trading volumes across the broader market slowed, the number of transactions on the ledger increased by over 3 million, spurred primarily by NFT activity once the XLS20 amendment passed on November 2nd of 2022. Although the number of transactions increased, XRP burned due to transaction fees declined by 33%, and the average cost of a transaction in USD remained virtually zero. During that same period of time, the average transaction fee on the Ethereum network was $2.75, and on the Bitcoin network was $1.23. Folks, think about this. this way, from a technological perspective, there just is no damn comparison. XRP transaction, substantially less than, less than a penny. And for Bitcoin, one, it's $1.23. Ethereum, $2.75. Good thing uh, you you can uh, you can move Bitcoin on the XRP ledger by having it represented uh, by an IOU. At least you can do that, like uh, Jay does with Spin the Bits. So uh, that way, Bitcoin doesn't have to be obsolete, even though its layer one technology unquestionably is, uh, you know, not exactly impressive in 2023. Just and I'm a big fan of, of, of Bitcoin, but it's still it's just it is what it is. I'm just a realist here. Uh, and then take a look at this. Uh, Ripple wrapped up 2022 with its strongest year to date of focusing on crypto utility and scaling its on-demand liquidity. As RippleNet continues to grow despite a tumultuous market, Ripple experienced the highest amount of demand from both new and existing customers adopting on-demand liquidity. Today, Ripple's crypto-powered payment solution is available in nearly 40 payout markets, up from just three markets, in 2020. So let's pause to say that is absolutely incredible and XRP is not going to cease to exist. It is not going away. It, it unquestionably is not going away. Even if we get a disaster uh, you know, scenario from the SECV Ripple loss in the United States, it's not going away. It, it, even worst case scenario, Ripple just ceases to do business with any <laughs> anyone in the United States effectively. Uh, okay. And look, I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm just saying... And then if, you, then if you think about the long-term viability of XRP, it's my firm stance that in order for a crypto to have long-term viability, it just needs to have one purpose, one actual use, and it needs to be adopted for that use. And so right here, we're already seeing that with on-demand liquidity. That's one, Now, obviously, there's many other use cases, and I'm interested in the totality of the uh, XRP ecosystem when, when, uh, when contemplating what my investment in XRP is actually worth. Ripple just happens to be a very important player in the ecosystem. But I'm saying even with just this one, even if there weren't others, this is enough for XRP to continue to exist. And as crypto continues to get adopted, it'll just become worth more and more and more. Like the writing's on the wall. It's on your damn screen. Like 
it, extra piece here to stay, and more and more people are figuring it out as time passes, and just wait till we get to the next euphoria stage. It's going to bring even more people in, and we'll have our starting point. You know, I happened to jump in November of 2017. I didn't know a damn thing about crypto, and I jumped in, and it happened to be when there was all sorts of news stories, and one of them caught my attention during the euphoria stage at the end of 2017, but there are all sorts of people that when you hit a euphoria stage, they actually stick around, and I was one of them. I'm sure some of you listening were from that era, and some some jumped in after that, and that's fine too. Maybe you're from the mo most recent cycle, and we had euphoria in 2021. Cool. That's awesome. And there's going to be more after that, though, with subsequent market cycles. People that have no idea that crypto exists are also going to be jumping in and learning about it. And the ecosystem just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, endlessly trending upwards despite major pullbacks. I think it's the coolest damn thing on the planet. Anyway. Ripple continues, they wrote, last quarter, on-demand liquidity was launched in France and Sweden in partnership with payments providers Lemonway and Xbot, respectively, and in Africa via MFS Africa, a leading payments gateway in the region. Additionally, Ripple expanded its customer base to, incorporates, uh, to corporates that are looking to experience the benefits of crypto-enabled cross-border payments for their business. Um, Ripple has processed nearly $30 billion worth of volume and 20 million transactions since RippleNet was first launched. In 2022, approximately 60% of those payments were sent through, through ODL. Oh, do you hear that? Last year, 60% of Ripple net transactions used XRP. 60%. And I actually mentioned it, it's, I think it was at some point, I guess earlier this year, and I had the data in front of me at the time, I don't for this video, but I cited that the earliest, one of the earliest reports after RippleNet was launched was that it was about 20% of, of Ripple net transactions used XRP via on-demand liquidity. And then there was a story sometime later, it may have been a whole year later, I can't recall, something like that probably, where instead of it just being 20%, it had jumped up to 25%. And then more recently, we saw that it had jumped up to 50%. And now this is the latest data that we're seeing, 60% of the transactions using XRP via on-demand liquidity. Which is why it's, it's, I've always been saying, and I'm sure as hell not the only one that's been saying this, if XRP is a better way for people to send money around the, the payment, you know, converting from one fiat currency to another, if it's the if it's a better way to do it, it's going to get adopted. It's happening. <laughs> XRP is not going away. This is the coolest damn thing on the freaking planet. So um, anyway, I just want to highlight a few of the more interesting things that I found as a result of this report. And there's other stuff in here too, but a lot of it had to do with broader crypto markets, including the FDF stocks, uh, FTX uh, stuff. You know, the the Ponzi collapse and bankruptcy and kind of, you know, tumultuous nature of what's happening on a macro scale with finance just in general. Um, and they did talk about some other projects and stuff, but um, I thought that this is some of the more interesting stuff. So I just thought I'd highlight that because again, it's it's all about <laughs> long-term viability and it's just, continue, it's just continued mounting evidence indicating, yeah, we're right. We are clearly right. Unless something goes disastrously long that we can't foresee, it already happened in terms of in terms of like figuring out, uh, is this, you know, sink or swim? It, it's swim, right? It's already happened. Like, this has already worked. Now it's just a matter of continuing to do more of the same, growing at greater adoption. That's it. I don't have a concern about whether or not XRP is going to continue to exist. I really don't. But I'll go ahead and wrap up here. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan. <laughs>